T.S. Eliot was born in the United States. He was a poet, an essayist, and a literary critic. He founded the Criterion and won a Nobel Prize for Literature. He became a British citizen and converted to Anglicanism in 1927. He theorized the mythical method, the objective correlative, and the impersonality of the artist. The impersonality of the artist is based on the principle that the man who suffers has to be separated from the apathic mind which creates. It is an act of self-sacrifice. The poet's task is not to present but to represent, not to say but to show. The objective correlative gives the universal formula of an emotion. The poet's task is to give a universal formula that is a set of images, events or objects in order to evoke that emotion and only that. In his essay, Tradition and Individual Talent, Eliot broke the heritage with traditional poets especially romantic poets, and admired Dante as the master of objectivity in poetry. Romantic poets expressed their own feelings and emotions. They were too self-centered. There is an excessive presence of the speaking voice of the poet. The wasteland was defined by Eliot as a heap of broken images. The poem is a mirror of a chaotic reality. There are no time rules. Past and present coexist. There are frequent shifts in time and place. There are no logical rules and connections. The poem is full of quotations from Christian and Hindu holy scriptures. There is no omniscient speaking voice, but several different voices from any period in the past, according to the mythical method. The wasteland is set in post-war Europe, especially in the Austrian Empire, which was in decadence. It is the breakdown of European culture and society. The 20th century as a whole can be considered as a heap of broken images. The 20th century witnessed totalitarian regimes, war wars. There was a common sense of frustration, anxiety, generational conflicts. World War I caused millions of soldiers to die. Whose fault was it? The old generation, the fathers, were guilty of deaths, violence, imperialism, exploitation. Absolute truths and old certainties are now shattered. Man's place in the universe, Victorian values, utilitarianism, respectability, marriage, family roles, the power of reason to control the human mind, the dissolution of the empire, the superiority of white people, new scientific discoveries, quantum mechanics, the new concept of space and time, according to Minkowski, now relative and dependent on the individual viewpoint. Henri Bergson and his distinction between objective linear time and subjective psychological time. All these factors brought to the end 
of positivistic faith in science and progress. Reality has now no shape and order unless confronted and compared to an ordered and meaningful past. The wasteland is bits of culture broken up by war and reassembled in a new frame. That culture, those stories that had kept people together are now in pieces. The mythical past is now in fragments, in pieces. We can't find a capital T truth, but many truths. Here are three examples of the use of the mythical method in the wasteland. The millions of commuters concentrated in a small area like the city in London made Elliot think of Dante's Inferno. In a bar, we can overhear a conversation about false teeth between two ladies. What's weird is that they use Ophelia's last words before she goes mad. And Ophelia is a classical Shakespearean character. Horatius' motto, Carpe Diem, has now become the simple hurry up call in a bar. Hurry up, please, it's time. In the last of the five sections of the wasteland, that is, what the thunder said, three groups gather on the mountains, men, demons, gods, to listen to what he, that is, the thunder, has to say about the meaning of life. The thunder only says one word, da, which is Sanskrit. The three groups hear or interpret da differently. Man hear, give. Demons hear, be compassionate. Gods hear, control yourselves. Da is the meaning that is missing in the poem and is missing in the word. The problem is, nobody knows what it means. But in the very last line of the poem, we find the Sanskrit word Shanti, peace, referring to Nirvana, peace that passes understanding. You can feel it, but you can't understand or comprehend it, unless you feel it. Eliot found it, he was baptized and converted to Anglicanism. <laughs>